Natural neighbor is a simple yet effective method for interpolating values to create a statistical surface. So natural neighbor is based on the same idea as Thiessen polygons, but kind of takes it one step further. So if we have a set of sample points like this, we can create Thiessen polygons around those sample points. So as we've seen before, we're creating a line that's halfway between two sample points here, another line here that's halfway between these two sample points. You connect all those lines up, you get these and polygons. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The difference between a regular kind of Thiessen polygon method and the natural neighbor method is, is this part here. So for an area or a location that we want to estimate a value for, so this red square represents a point that we don't have a sample for, we don't know what the value is, we're trying to estimate it, okay? So if we want to implement Tobler's law and try to use values that are nearby to influence that or to help estimate that and make the uh, assumption that uh, the values are going to be similar or the, the value at that location is going to be similar to the values around it, how can we do that? How can we take advantage of that? So how this method works is it creates a new Thiessen polygon as though this square actually existed as a sample point. So now we have a new boundary here that's halfway between these two points, a new boundary here that's halfway between these two points, and so on. And so this blue line represents what would be a new Thiessen polygon if that point was introduced into our data set. It's not a real point, we're estimating it, but th that's what it would look like. Okay, so far so good. So then it estimates, or actually calculates, the area of each of those new polygons and the proportion of the area of the new polygon to the old polygon. What do I mean by that? Okay, so for example, if we had uh, this polygon here, okay, this is the original Thiessen polygon. Hopefully you can see that all right. And now we've cut out this yellow part and if we're going to estimate the value of this point here, and we're going to use this point up here as part of that estimation, we're going to use the area of this yellow part to weight the value from this point up here. I'll keep going and hopefully this will make sense to you. Okay, so if we have a sample value of 80, let's say it's a zinc concentration or it could be elevation or whatever, and let's say that this polygon represents 20% of the total area of this polygon, right? So this, this here is 20%. So then we're going to multiply the sample value, 80, by 20%. Here I've just converted it to 0 0.2, same thing. And so we're going to repeat that for each polygon and each sample value here and here. So those are related, this one to here. We're going to uh, measure the areas of the, the each polygon, multiply that, or look at the proportion of that area to the original Thiessen polygon, multiply by that, add them all up, and that will give us a weighted estimation of what that point value would be using the essentially the distances from each point as that weighting. Maybe that's another way of thinking about it, is that you're saying that the farther something is away, so here we have this, the, uh, the different, you'll have a different um, sized area based on that distance, right? So if it's closer, the area will be larger, like this one here. This point is closer behind our little um, label there. If it's closer, that area of that uh, polygon will be larger, which means the proportion will be larger, which means the weighting will be larger, which means that that closer sample point will have more influence on our interpolation. If you have a sample point that's much farther away, then the proportion of the area will be smaller and the weighting will be smaller, and that will have less influence on our calculation for our sample point. So it's, it seems like a fairly uh, straightforward method, I hope, but it kind of builds in some, some neat ideas about Tolbert's law and, and distance decay using, I think, a rather element or elegant method. So I use this natural neighbor method to estimate zinc values for our MUSE data set in the Netherlands. And you'll see that this is a, 
a, a, very, a relatively smooth landscape. If we compared this to a Thiessen polygon version, which would be with these abrupt boundaries at the, at the edge of each polygon, you'll see that this is much smoother. And remember, that's because for every single cell in this data set, it's going through that process that I just described and creating a new polygon and doing the, the weighting and then creating the calculation for that cell and moving on and doing it again. Now, uh, hopefully this is already clear, but just in case it isn't, you're not seeing any of those polygons being created. It's not part of the resulting data set. All it's doing is using those kind of invisibly or behind the scenes in a way to, to do those calculations. So the result you get is much smoother than you would get from just a straightforward Thiessen polygon method. One other thing I want to mention here is that when it's doing these calculations, it's only using the points that are nearby to do the calculation. So it's the points that are directly uh, closest to it that are being used to create these new Thiessen polygons. And because it's not using all of the sample points for each calculation, but only the ones that are near it, that makes it a local method of interpolation. Just thought I'd mention that.